Hi, this is Sean from Not Bad Men, and uh, starting in Not Bad Men 2.30, we provided the ability to not only uh, create category names using Excel, um, but also to create relationships of those particular product names up to 15 levels deep. Now, I don't know personally of any um, any e-commerce store, really, for that matter, that has categories up to 15 levels deep. Even probably eBay and, and Amazon don't don't go that far. I certainly don't know of any not commerce, but we tried to go the extra mile. Um, and um, what I'm going to do today is just very quickly do a video, a demonstration of how you can import the product names as well, or sorry, category names as well as assign the relationships. It's not hard. Um, there's just a little bit of, of detail you need to pay attention to. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, what I have here is not admin pulled up and I just go to Excel operations and import categories from Excel. Now we're going to assume I have nothing. I don't know how to do this and I'm going to start from scratch. So um, there's a view template here we can do and it just pulls up a Excel spreadsheet of some sort and uh, what I'm going to do is just save this to my desktop because I'm going to work in this. Oh, hit the wrong button. I'll go save as and we'll call it a op admin demo. Save. Okay. Now I should be good. Alright. Um, Basically, in uh, the first cell, we see some Boolean fields, true, false. You need to select either true, false. Don't try to type anything else in there. It'll give you an error. Okay, so just please select true or false. This is for validation. Um, to make sure the spreadsheet will work when it gets pulled into NOP admin. And then we see a category 1, category 2, all the way through. Category 15. Now you don't want to change any of these values, these header names. These are there for a reason. Not admin looks for these. Now we see some sample data here. Let's look at this one a little bit. This one, um, I'm going to zoom in. All right. Now, basically, it looks like I can have some things strung together. All right, what do all these mean? Well, there's a comment up here. And if you read this, it tells you exactly what each one of these is. Basically, you can include an image reference as well as the display order along with the category name. Just separate them by semicolons. It needs to be in this format. Category name, full image path, and display order integer. All right. Um, using the sample data here, we're just going to have it looks like Category 1, 2, 3, along with the display orders. Right? Notice these don't have those extra fields. That's because I may not have anything for them, and that's not a big deal. Okay? You can leave them out. However, look at this funny one. Okay? If I, let's say I have a name, but I don't have an image, and I still want to assign a display order of some type, I still need to have a blank or, or at least a, a, a something to hold the place of that image name even though I don't have something in there so I just put two semicolons in there right you see that um, so that way it basically says you know the display order is always the third position is, is what that's saying so um, I need to go find some images because I'm pretty sure I don't have an F Google images This, this uh, software is hiding my toolbar. There we go. Now I can see what I'm doing. Alright, there just so happens to be some images in the web folder. 
wallpaper. Except sometimes I don't think now, just in the past, I've got security problems when I tried to pull from them. So I'm just going to copy these things and paste them into a folder that I know I can pull from. Just going to stick them right here on C. Okay, so let's go ahead and change these things. So I'm going to call it. Um, as a JPEG. And I'll leave it category 9, that's fine. And I think there was one called Bliss. One called Ascent. And we'll just edit this one as well. I think there was one called Autumn, right? Azul, Ascent. And autumn.jpg. Okay, make, make sure these formats are right. So I got category name of cat1. We're going to upload the azul.jpg and assign it display order 9, category 2, so on and so forth, right? All the way through category 15. Now, how do we assign the relationships? This is the really cool thing, right? Basically, the relationships are assigned by your secondary and you know your your rows underneath your your category names. So here we're going to have category one is the same, category two is the same. Oh, here we deviate. So it looks like we're going to create another category at the third level called Cat 3.1. which is going to be under cat2 and cat2 is going to be under cat1 so the hierarchy will be cat2 cat I'm sorry cat1 cat2 and then cat2 is going to have two categories under it called cat3 and cat3.1 now let's take a look at this one so we have category 1 which is the same as this and this category 2 3 and this is going to go all the way down to category 4, 5, 6, right? So at category, f the, the children of category 5 are going, to, are going to be category 6 and category 6-1, all right? Are you getting this? I mean, this is a little bit complicated, but it's not really too bad. Um, if you, I would recommend, recommend as a best practice just uh, setting this spreadsheet up in basically the same hierarchy as you want your categories to be listed in. You know what I mean? Um, so put all your cat cat ones together, all your cat twos, threes, you know, in subcategories, and then um, and just group them together in, in logical rows like this, so you can you can easily see how these hierarchies are going to relate. So here's a cat one. And it looks like we're going to create a, a secondary, I'm sorry, another category at the, the, the second level called cat2.2-1. And then this one is going to be another category 1 with evidently no, um, no hierarchies. So anyway, just a word of warning on this. If you get down to if you get down to your second or third categories, right, and you may have accessories, for example, that's a pretty common one, you may have accessories for a category two called, you know, for a category two of tools, and then you have like category three of accessories, and then you have another category of, um, oh, I don't know, uh, rakes, 
or something and then you have another category the same thing called accessories you know um, what you want to try to do as much as possible instead of saying accessories of category 2 and accessories of category I'm sorry accessories on this line of tools and accessories on this line of rakes you know you may want to say accessories dash tools accessories dash rakes the thing is is because if you have categories below this it's going to be making that translation by name and what's going to happen is if you have two category threes called tool I'm sorry accessories chances are your subcategories here are going to get messed up they're not going to appear under the right ones because they're not going to know which accessories category to fall under so that's why I'm saying try to make your um, your category names at the same level unique as much as possible and then your subcategory relationships should be fine so that's the only caveat to, to doing this um, you know it's, it's just the way it is so if you can do that as a best practice you you won't have any trouble whatsoever so all right um, I believe I have this ready to go I'm gonna go ahead and save it ow I just click don't save da ah. sorry I have to I have to f go back and fix this then So just take a second. That's what I get for trying to talk and explain and <laughs> do all this stuff at the same time. <sighs> there was, uh, let's see. Autumn and... I don't remember the, the, the scent. All right, just to make sure I got this right. Autumn and as well. Okay. And now I'm going to save. Very good. All right, flip back to not bad men. Sorry about that and we go browse desktop category import template preview there's our data it looks good and just like I do every time I'm gonna leave the run test checked do a test first and it's going through and saying cat 1, 2, all this would have been added which is good all right, that all looks good. No error messages. Now, check this out. This is good. Stored image and database, category name. Um, parent ID 0 was added. That basically means that's the root, so that's the first category. Category name cat2, parent ID 19 was added. Um, and that's basically saying probably the cat1 is ID 19. So category 2, the parent ID of category 1 was added. That's all that's saying. So it looks like we've got a bunch of positives here. Was added. We see our images are stored in the database. That's all good. Let's go take a look at it in OpCommerce. And we refresh. Okay. Now, I don't see my, my category. What happened? Well, we're probably looking at cash. Um, so what I always do, I always go to the administration flip it back to English so we can read it. I just got done doing a multi-language uh, video so that's why it was in a it looked a little odd. Um, if you ever in, in op admin and you're doing stuff and you flip back to your store and it looks like it doesn't work you may be looking at old data so what I always do is log, log into the admin do a clear cache and you should see the page refresh
Okay, very good. So here we are. Here's our category, our cat1-1, one one, and our cat1. Let's just open up that spreadsheet again. Uh, let's see, where was that thing? Okay, so we got cat-1-1 dash one dash one with no subcategories, and then our cat1 with many subcategories. So let's start flipping through here. There's our cat1 with no subs. Excellent. I'm sorry, our cat1-1 one one with no subs. There's our cat1. There's our cat2 with the picture. Cat3 with the picture. And it looks like it keeps on going all the way down until hopefully 15. Right? So, that um, that's just a very quick way on how you can import um, you know very quickly uh, category names as well as images you can assign display orders and uh, as well as assign category and uh, subcategory relationships so um, that concludes this video um, again my name is Sean from Not Bad Men. thank you very very much for your time um, we try to be quick about these things and uh, you know there's sometimes a lot of detail that goes in, into this and I want to try to explain it as best I can however if you have problems if you try not bad men and you have problems with um, with things related to this video or whatever please feel free to contact me at sales at, at uh, I'm sorry support at notbadmen.com um, whether you're a paying customer or not you know if you're trying the free version we'd be glad to help you anyway so um, you know uh, just feel free to try not bad men and um, hey, if you like it you know shoot me an email and tell me about it I'd really appreciate hearing from from folks to see how, how uh, this product is helping them. So thanks again for your time and uh, hope you enjoy the video.